coming up to a road. Uh, it's a bit of a shortcut to both uh, Uluru and also Kings Canyon. It's called Ernest Giles Road, but it, it's got a reputation of being a bit, a bit dodgy. Um, you know, they talk about recommend four wheel drive, yada yada yada, 100 kilometres of unsealed. Mm. I've agreed to do it. I've read, you know, that it's sandy and as I said, a bit dodgy but dodge. But I did it in 2010 and I don't recall any major issues. There was a truck rolled over, but that's because he took the bend a bit quick. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. Warning, sand drifts and corrugations, 4x4 wheel drive advisable, access to King Canyon via the Lassiter Highway is recommended. Yeah, OK. OK, well, you've warned me, you've kept your end of the bargain. Find a place to bush camp. Oh, big stump there. Wouldn't want to hit that. This will do. Well, it's uh, early morning. We've just taken a diversion off the Ernest Giles Road. Just going to have a look at the Henbury meteorite crater. Crashed to Earth about 4,000 years ago. Well, that's Ernest Giles Road, done and dusted. I didn't have any oh shit moments, so I think I think the hype's not warranted. Uh, it's the, the road is as I remember it, 10 years ago. So it's a good option for adventure riders to get off the blacktop. Uh, now we've got a, a two-hour ride on the blacktop to Uluru or Yalara. Uh, we'll probably stop in between at Curtin Springs for a coffee, I think. Tom continues to have problems with the bike, although he seems to think it's getting less, but a certain... Whoa, hang on a lot, buddy. 
As soon as he gets on the blacktop, that's when the problems start. Entering uh, Yalara. Yalara is pretty much the, uh, the tourist hub that supports Uluru National Park. We're only going to be here long enough to resupply and refuel. Uh, we're not here as tourists, so to speak. Both Tom and I have been here before, so uh, yeah, we'll go to the, the IGA and uh, get what we need, get a guts full of fuel, cup of coffee, and keep transiting, heading west, I think. You can tell who's going. Yeah, uh, we, we can't have I know. Really. I know. I know. Um, I know. I know. Do you need to pass a message on to your mate at Docker River? Well, if you're going to Docker River, when you go through the communities on your left, and then right after that is a campground. Yeah. And the campground is kind of abandoned because it's. You, you see these little cabins, and you think they're cabins. There you go. Come on. It's full blood. It's a Poor bastard. Him and a mate, they're on a motorcycle adventure around Australia. They're from overseas, I don't know where, but from overseas somewhere. And they've covered about you know, 12 or 13,000 kilometres here in Oz. And they're on Great Central Road. And they've done a tube. They've shredded a tube. They had spares. And they shredded that one. And they ran out of spares. So this poor prick has had to leave his mate behind at Docker River. Get a lift here. Organise replacement tubes. Now, of course, he's got to get back to Docker River. And we've organised, we flagged somebody down to get him to the junction, the turn off to the WA border. He's been ignored by all these tourists. Anyway, good luck to him. We'll, we'll call into the campground and have a word to his mate just to let him know that he's inbound eventually.
this road initially is black cotton. That's a nice very long. And it's uh, gravel, good gravel for about 1100 kilometres from here to the WA. Leave it in. Aboriginal community, obviously just the side of the border, and that's where the blokes hold up. There's a campground between Docker River and the border. That's where these blokes are, or well, that's where one bloke is. Those blokes. Yeah, that's just a loose sand around here. We're getting close to Docker River now. The bloke with the busted bike or his mate in this campground or so I believe. It's not much of a campground, it's pretty dodgy this one. But it's supposed to be the only place that you can bush camp on the Northern Territory side of Great Central Road. None of these facilities are open or available. No, no, my guess is this is him or them. I see a bike without a front wheel on it. Good night. You have to you have to come across uh, my mate with his tire. That's why we are here. Oh, is our mate been out here? Just to go. What if he says it like? Oh, oh about uh, I think he's dead. He's dead. Hey, mate. He's all right. I've been here for two and a half days. That'd be a long time in a place like this but when he has to he goes to the community just jumps on his bike goes to the community for food and water the copper at the community knows he's here but, um, and my guess is his mate his offsider will be here if not later today then probably tomorrow he'll get a lift quick enough so Tom and I will ride on for another hour and then uh, find a place to pull up we'll be in WA in about 10 kilometres going to uh, peel off on this minor road and see if we can find a bush camp away from the main the main road because that road does have a little bit of traffic on it occasionally. I don't know where this road leads, it's in good shape. I haven't checked but I, my guess is this is marked on wiki camps because there's a bloke camp in there. So it must be an area that's known to by others. into Warwick Kerner. There's a sign on the door that says closed. Uh-oh. Saturday and Sunday. 9... Oh, 9.30. Does that say 9.30? 9.30. Uh, 20 minutes. Next fuel Warburton 2.35. My bike's telling me I've got 213. So we're going to go and entertain ourselves for 20 minutes and then come back. It's just not worth the risk and the fuel stress. So we'll go up to the weather station at Giles. I know you folks have been there several times with me, so we won't report anything of it, but uh, we can go up there and have a look see anyway.
Uh, we've pulled up at Warburton. Uh, I actually, today's Sunday, and I thought, well, I might just ring Chukarilia Roadhouse because sometimes these communities have odd opening and closing hours and I didn't want to get there and then find out that they were closed and we couldn't get fuel so I've rung them and they actually said that there's been a fatality nearby and they're involved in trying to sort that out so we're going to have to refuel to our maximum and in fact a couple of litres in the bladder wouldn't go astray either I don't think otherwise we're not going to make it to Laverton $3.10 a litre it's going to be an expensive fill 100 bucks maybe all right, we're about to leave Warburton. See that sign there? Not the one that says no photos, but the other one that says Opal. That's the type of fuel that we get around here. It's low aromatic. You don't get a high if you inhale it, because petrol sniffing can be a problem in these communities. I've said that before. Now, yeah, anyway, petrol sniffing can be an issue here. So they have low aromatic fuel, so kids don't get a high from it and it does affect the performance your fuel consumption I didn't think it was as bad as it was but normally in today's conditions with a little bit of a tailwind etc I would probably get five liters per 100 kilometers my consumption now has gone up to about 5.8 which is significant I guess I didn't think it would be that much but it is it does it does anyway uh, from here we'll start or we'll continue heading west the uh, accident site I believe is about 80 kilometres this side of Chukarelia and I was thinking about the logistics of trying to clean that up and in the middle of nowhere we'd need you know tilt trays recovery vehicles if it's on its roof vehicle to uh, carry away the victims the deceased so yeah it, uh, wouldn't be easy to sort out not out here guess is this is the scene of the fatal surprised to see so much debris still here it happened about eight o'clock this morning it's now I don't know one o'clock Oh Jesus, two cars. I never expected that. Remember, improvise, adapt, overcome. And the Grand Hotel Kukaini. Why have a dog and bark yourself? <laughs> 